Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. And of course, to everybody who's watching, if you get anything out of this video, I would really appreciate if you would take a second or two just to click that thumbs up button. It's a great way to show support for my channel and you don't have to spend any money. What I'm going to talk about in today's video is what your mama never told you about CNC bits. Now this is a video that's really geared towards folks who are thinking about adding a CNC machine to their workshop. And they're just sort of exploring everything that they need to research in order to pull the trigger. Uh, because it's not just the CNC machine you have to buy, but it's also the computer that you're gonna connect to it. But more importantly, it's all the bits that you have to purchase to use with your CNC machine. I'm not going to give you specific recommendations about the type of bits that you should use for your CNC machine because in truth, it depends on the machine that you're going to purchase as well as the material that you're going to be cutting into and the type and style of carving operations that you're performing. So every single type of operation you perform is going to require a different type of bit. And I don't want to recommend specific bits because you may not find those bits that I use to be the type of bits that you would want to use and vice versa. However, I may at some point down the road do a video where I give just a general idea of the kind of bits that you're going to need to use. And maybe I'll present it as the bits that I use. Now, I think I've actually done videos like this in the past. I'd have to go back and look. In fact, if you want to uh, search yourself, you can go to my Highline Guitars uh, uh, YouTube page and click on the little magnifying glass and do a search in my videos for CNC bits. And I think you'll see a couple of videos will pop up and you can watch those and get an idea of what I use. The most important information and what your mama has probably never told you about selecting CNC bits is that whatever bit you purchase, you need to know all the specifications for that bit. Because when you start to set up your tool paths in your CAM software, it's gonna to wanna to know everything that it can about the bits that you're gonna use. And if you have that information, you can feed it in to the software. It's usually stored there permanently, so you don't have to add it every single time. But that's gonna tell that program, your CAM program, what type of bit is being used, and it can then create tool paths that are designed specifically for that bit, so you get more precise carving operations. Now, the specifications I'm talking about are typically the overall length of the bit, the diameter of the shaft, the number of, of cutting flutes, the length of the flutes, the diameter of the flutes, whether it's a flat end mill or a ball mill or a taper bit, like one of these, um, you also need to tell what the radius of the uh, end of the bit is. Uh, some bits have, you know, like a ball end, which is the radius is equal to the radius of the diameter of the bit. But there are other bits that have just a tiny round over on the corners. Um, you need to know all that information. And also, a lot of the CAM programs, you can set up default uh, feed and speed parameters for each bit. So you can tell the software what the feed rate's going to be, the step over, the step down, the plunge rate, any ramping um, strategies. You can import all that into your CAM software. Okay, so what you see on the screen right now is what I, looks like in mesh cam when I have to input the specifications for a specific bit. And all the specifications that I just mentioned are displayed in this dialogue. And so I have to input all that information regarding the specifications. And then once that information has been input into the program, I can save it for that bit, and that bit will always be available with those specifications. And then when I am planning my tool paths, 
I can select the bit that I want to use, the one that I feel is most appropriate for the specific cutting operation, and it will use those specifications in order to calculate the tool path, and then from that it will write the G-code file. So the more accurate the information is, the better the tool path is, and the more accurate the G-code is. And there are some bits of information, for example, regarding the feeds and speeds that you may not know. And oftentimes manufacturers will provide you with a uh, minimum and maximum type uh, recommendation for feeds and speeds. But oftentimes those details are based on experience and that experience is dictated by the machine you have and what its capabilities are. And I realize this starts getting kind of complicated or perhaps frustrating since if you're brand new to CNC, you're not gonna know what those feeds and speeds are. But what you can do is you can visit a, there's a multitude of CNC forums out there, Facebook groups and such, where you can talk to folks and get an idea of what sort of feeds and speeds you should assign to your bit before you uh, put those that information into your CAM program. What this means is when you're shopping for bits and you find a good source for bits on the internet, it could be anywhere, it could be eBay, it could be um, Amazon, AliExpress, and there's you know a, a huge number of online sellers that aren't on eBay or Amazon or any of those uh, sites. But you wanna make sure that when you find the bit, it also, the description, includes all the specifications that you're gonna need. If it doesn't, you at least wanna be able to determine who made the bit and hopefully what the part number of the bit is because then you can search the internet for that information. And just know that there are a lot of bit makers out there such as Ansrud and Whiteside who have websites that have extensive information about each bit they make and all the details that you need to know. But if you're shopping for other um, no-name bits that have no specifications, you need to try to find those specifications. You're gonna have to import that or input that into your CAM software, so you're gonna have to know. And yes, you could guess, or you could base the uh, specifications of your bit on another known bit that's similar, but it's always a good idea to have accurate, precise information because that's the whole point of CNC. We're trying to do precise carving operations. And it starts with the CAM side of the whole process. And if you can input accurate, correct information about the bits you're using, you're gonna get high quality G-code files to send to your CNC machine to make accurate and precise cuts. So I hope that makes sense. I think it should. And it's just another thing to think about as you're considering taking the plunge into adding a CNC machine to your workshop. But I can almost promise you, if you're thinking about CNC, you're gonna love it when you get it. So uh, until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for future guitar building videos.